not going to be any use at all. One of my favourite things that I had bought um, that I was very excited about are these, uh, which are socks, which you attach batteries to. Um, so you can have nice warm feet because you know that I really suffer it in the cold because <laughs> I've got rain on. So I was really pleased with those. I was expecting to wear a nice onesie at night. Don't worry, there's plenty of uses for the onesie. Um, I had hot water bottles, had this lovely hat. So none of that. Actually, the hat might be of use because actually in the desert, so we're going across this incredible desert, which I think is the oldest desert um, in the world. And it is really, really hot during the day. So plus 30, 35 during the day. But I think actually it can get cold at night. So I will stay, take, still take that hat. <laughs> I happen to know, Louise, that you're a very positive person. You, you're, one of, you're, a, you're a glass half full kind of a person. I know that. So, on the upside, you mentioned the old uh, Raynaud's because you're really yeah. worried, weren't you, more than anything else about the cold on the fingers. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, no, so we'll talk about that first. So you're right, I'm always glass half full and I think that's when they phoned up, up the people who were taking part. They phoned me first because they pretty much knew that I would say, of course, I would still do the challenge. <laughs> so that's why they phoned me first. And yes, to be really honest with you, Charlie and Sally, yeah, I was really worried about the rain hours because I only have to go, to, my, my hands are really cold right now, I only have to go to the supermarket for them to go numb. So that could have meant, I think, and we don't, you know, I don't know how it would have been, perhaps that, you know, I might not have been able to complete the challenge. But you talk about the heat and there are huge challenges with that as well. Obviously, 35 degrees, we're doing pretty much a marathon distance a day. Um, and that is going to be massively, it's going to be very difficult. Um, one of the, so we have the first day, I think we're on fat bikes and they're fat, I've never ridden a fat bike, but you know, my ice skating was rubbish as well. So uh, <laughs> they, they have big tires. And so we ride the bikes over sand dunes on the first day. Don't tell the others, apparently the first 10 kilometers are really, really hilly. Um, so that's going to be a tough first day. That's 35 miles. Second day is little June day. Um, so they're, 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 but they're, I don't think they're small dunes that we would consider small dunes. So that's a June day, 20, I think it's about 25 miles walking, so nearly marathon distance walking. Then we get up the next day, presumably pretty exhausted, and then we have big June day. And these are, I think, you know, if you've seen those beautiful um, pictures of, of sand dunes in movies and all the rest of it, those are what we're going to be walking over, up and down, up and down. And with, they're still trying to make it a triathlon. We might try, apparently, uh, cross-country skiing down some of those sand dunes. So that could be fun, dangerous, I don't know. <laughs> Can I just say, Lou, one of the things that occurs to me this morning, since you, uh, you're at home there, isn't it nice... On your day off, you're sitting on your sofa watching BBC Breakfast. That's what you'd be doing, right, all morning. <laughs> just sitting there watching us, just from home. Isn't that nice? You, you say that. Charlie, of course I watch you on BBC Breakfast. I genuinely still do wake up. I mean, obviously not at 3.40 in the morning when I'm, when I'm off. But, um, yeah, I do watch you at 7 o'clock in the morning. So it's OK. It's pretty normal for me. I'm not normally on BBC Breakfast. Uh, the only thing I have... Honestly, I've got so much preparation to do. The only thing I have from all those, um, those mad adventures I've done, all those triathlons that I've done, I've got a little backpack here um, that I can put my water... Look, you put this in, fill that up with water. And so I will be carrying my own water, and that is pretty much the only preparation um, I've done so far. I'd love people send, to send in ideas of how to cope in that heat and to keep going as well, because it's been very, very draining. <sighs> if there's anyone who can do it, Lou, it is you. We have total faith. I hope so. And the, t oh, the team are lovely, and we've had quite a lot of discussion about the change of, of locations. Some of them are are happy i mean i am i think feel a little bit happier about going to namibia um others not so happy about going to namibia um, but the team are great and i think you know what we'll have to do we will have to stick together there will be moments when there'll be people you know struggling up one of those sand dunes and i might well be one of those people but we you know we stick together we will be able to get through it it's a hundred miles it's for a great cause our our challenge particularly is to raise money uh, for mental health services in the uk and around the world so you know, that will keep us motivated and hopefully, I know there are a couple of people like Rob Brinda who will make me laugh a lot <laughs> along the way. Lou, it's great to see you. Keep in touch. Good luck. Uh, so just remind, the challenge will be filmed, of course, for a BBC One documentary to be shown in the run-up to Sport Relief uh, on Friday.